Hello, in this screencast, I'd like to teach you how to do a manual installation of Mojo Portal in IIS 7.5 and using Microsoft SQL Server. So you can see I've downloaded the latest Mojo Portal release and I've extracted it to this folder and it has the WW root folder. Now this could be, you could put this anywhere on your hard drive, you know, this is just a demo, I'm just going to leave it as it is, but um, if this was going to be a permanent installation, I might not want it nested under this version name folder. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, it's fine. We'll just leave it right where it is. There's a couple things we have to understand, and the main things are basically uh, setting up the database and configuring file permissions, and uh, we'll just get started uh, with that. Basically, what you want to do for your database is you go into SQL Server Management Studio. You'll create a new data database. I'll just name it Mojo install demo, create it. And then under security, I will create a new login, a SQL login. Notice that uh, we have a choice of Windows or SQL. Uh, typical hosting, you're going to use SQL authentication, so it's better if you have your SQL Server configured for what's known as mixed mode, which allows both Windows and SQL Server. So I'm going to say install demo is my username. And I'm just going to say demo123, demo123. I'm not going to enforce a password policy, otherwise it would make me make the user want to change its password on the first try. Uh, and then I'm going to go to uh, server rules, or I mean user mapping. And I'm going to choose the uh, database we just created. And I'm going to make this user DB owner of that database. So let's say I'm going to make it that also his uh, default database. OK, um, a quick point, um, you know, if you really wanted to harden a security installation, you didn't have to have a, a user who's the DBO owner running all the time when your site is running, but you do need it for installation. After that, you could create a user who has only exact permission on all the stored procedures to harden a SQL installation. Um, but for these purposes, we'll, we'll keep it simple here. So we've got Mojo installed demo, and we've got the user um, install demo. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is go back to the file system, and we're going to look in the root at this user.config.sample file, and we're going to rename it to just user.config. This allows us to keep some settings uh, isolated from web.config so that when we update web.config and upgrades, we don't lose that. Uh, so let's see, what do we call that guy again? Install demo. What, what do we call that user? Uh, and its password is just demo123. And the database again was. Uh, and so I save that. We've configured our connection string, we've created our database. Now, um, the next thing is we need to configure folder permissions. Before we can do that, we need to know who it needs permissions on. So we go into IS. Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll. we'll uh, point the default website to that folder we just created by choosing basic settings and we'll go down to uh, Mojo install demo branch it down and make that the root of the site. Now who needs permission is this application pool user. We're using the default application pool. Uh, so what we want to do is go into application pools so this default application pool and go to uh, I think basic settings is it no, and it shows us who the identity is. Now here's something interesting. I'm running Windows 7, uh, but this machine was upgraded from Vista, and I believe it kept some settings from my previous Vista installation. I think a default installation gets a different user here. If you're just doing a clean installation of Windows 7 or Windows 2008 uh, release 2, you might have a different user here. Whoever this user is, the important thing is that that user has permission to read the entire web directory and it has full control of the data folder and the app data folder. Now an another thing I've heard that some people have problems with that um, applicate that identity that's defaults and some people will change it to network service like I have it. Um, 
some people have had to change this to true, I believe, to solve it with that identity. Um, there's resources online that can help that, and there's some information on MojoPortal.com on the IS page, too, with some links. But in any case, my machine was upgraded from Vista, so I already had the previous setting of network service users, the identity user that the application pool runs as, and that's the user that needs the permission on the file system. So I'm just going to OK back out of that, and I'm going to go back to my root folder, and I'm going to say, OK, on this folder, which is properties, and on directory security, click edit, add, advanced, find now, and then I'm going to look for that network service user. And there it is. And I choose that guy. And I say OK. And he, by default, is going to get read permission on this whole structure. He's got to be able to read web.config. He's got to be able to read all the DLLs and everything, uh, pretty much every file. So, But now what we want to do is make this folder have a little bit more permissions. We want him to have full control of the data folder. And I'm not sure it's essential on a local install, but I know on hosted environments, well, yeah, I think you do need, he needs permission to control this one too, app data. Because temporary files get written there by need upload and things like that. So edit his permission. Click OK. Okay, so we've configured file permissions, we've configured the database, and we've pointed the default website to that folder. So now we can go back into our browser and we can just say localhost. And of course, since there's no database tables created, a few errors are naturally generated during the initial installation process. Uh, but those errors are trapped and then it realizes that oh you know we need to install and it will redirect to the setup page okay it didn't like that uh, couldn't connect to the database so something is wrong in my connection string so I'm going to go back up here well one thing is when you uh, make a change to user.config it doesn't detect it automatically like it does with web.config so sometimes you just have to touch web.config to make it reload, and there it goes. And it runs through all the script, and ultimately you can click the link and go to the home page. Test. Uh, but you can sign in as admin at admin.com and the password admin. And there your basic site is running. Now you notice I put this right at the root at localhost. Um, if you're going to be populating the content into the database on your local machine and then moving it to a root site on a production server, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to make sure the URL structure is the same if you're going to move the data. And uh, the, you know, the other alternative way I could have installed it is a virtual directory, like localhost forward slash mojo. Uh, if I, and, and you can do that, and it's fine for development as long as you're not using the same database that your production site is running. Unless your production site is also going to run in a folder named Mojo, then that would be okay in that scenario. But typically, you're going to have a, you know, a root domain site. And in order to you know, create data in your local machine and then restore that data on production, you would want to have the same URL structure. And the reason is because once you start populating images, the, the URLs for the images are relative to the root of the site. Uh, uh, but if the site is running in a virtual directory, then the, you know, since the images are still virtual to the or relative to the root of the site, that virtual folder will be part of the URL to the image. So it would be like slash mojo slash some image name. And then when you move that up to production and it's no longer in a folder, that's a broken URL. It would point to a file that doesn't exist. So you want to keep it the same. You can, uh, if you're not using the same database, if you're just testing the software with a different database, you could easily put it at localhost mojo.